I am still serving my country, and I am still gay. That was Lieutenant Dan Choi complaining about America's don't ask, don't tell policy on gays in the military. It is a policy that exists nowhere else. Only America says if you're gay, you can serve as long as you're quiet about it. The policy happened because for years the rule was that gays were forbidden to serve, and the issue rarely came up because homosexuality was such a taboo, no soldier would admit he was gay. But then times changed, and President Clinton promised to overturn the ban. But a Democratic Congress said no, and they proposed legislation saying gays would create an unacceptable risk to the high standards of morale and unit cohesion. Clinton then responded with a compromise, don't ask, don't tell, and that's still the law. And that upsets gay soldiers like Dan Choi. Choi served 10 years in the military. He served in Iraq, and eventually he moved to the National Guard. Then last year, he came out on Rachel Maddow's show. I am gay. He took his protest to the White House. Repeal, don't ask, don't tell, not next year, not tomorrow, but now. He speaks out at gay rights protests. Don't ask, don't tell is a violation of integrity, of love, of everything that America stands for. So I am absolutely proud to violate don't ask, don't tell all the way down this street today. Dan Choi joins us now. In the video we showed earlier, he said, I'm still serving and I'm still gay, but just last week you were officially discharged. And my thought is, what took him so long? This is the law. Well, usually all it takes is a statement. In my trial, I told them I might be in violation of don't ask, don't tell, but I am upholding the West Point Honor Code. I am upholding some of the values that our army was founded on. What about the soldiers who are uncomfortable having you around? I think to assume that soldiers are uncomfortable or afraid or nervous or so unprofessional that they cannot deal with the truth. While not only other countries are able to do it, but the FBI, the CIA, the State Department, the Secret Service, they have no problem with openly gay people, honest people serving right next, uh, right next to them. Why would you assume that our soldiers, as strong as they are, would be so weak that the moment that somebody tells the truth, they scream and yell and then they quit. And what did we lose by throwing you out of the military? My soldiers are now without a West Point graduate who has a degree in Arabic. I'm fluent in Arabic. I grew up learning Korean, and I was starting to study uh, Farsi a year and a half ago. So, so we need Arab linguists. We need linguists. You are one. John, you ask the... Uh, soldiers and the officers in this counterinsurgency, not only in Afghanistan, but in Iraq, what do you need the most? And what resource do you lack? And they will tell you, I really need to understand what the people are trying to communicate to me. And our mission is compromised whenever you throw out one more Arabic linguist, one more Farsi linguist, a surgeon, an infantryman, a pilot, all of these qualified people who all wanted to serve their country, as long as they tell the truth about who they are, are thrown out immediately. And, as I said, some soldiers don't want to serve with you. A poll by the Military Times found that if Don't Ask, Don't Tell were repealed, 14% said they'd consider ending their military careers. And many of them said, look, you know, if you're going to have someone of the same sex living in a close quarters with me uh, that is attracted to the same sex, uh, I feel uncomfortable about that. Lots of people say it would be terrible for the troops' morale. Here's how Bill O'Reilly said it to Dennis Miller. If you do this, particularly in Iraq and Afghanistan, it's going to cause a lot of morale problems. Whether you like it or not, people don't want openly gay uh, soldiers uh, or Marines in the barracks, and it's going to cause problems. Bob McGinnis joins us now from Washington. He helped draft Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And, Bob, you say that should remain the policy. Yeah, John, back in 93, we looked at the consequences. We looked at uh, the damage to effective units, uh, all sorts of cohesion studies. You know, all of these things added up were very compelling, as you indicated in your intro, that uh, a Democratic Congress said, look, you know, we're not going down that pathway. Uh, but I don't know that anybody really knows where, where this would go if we did lift the ban. But, but lots you know, of countries do this. Studies, and you just mentioned well, separate barracks. I don't think we have a list of the countries that allow this. Do they all have separate barracks? I don't think so. 
Well, we, we only have anecdotes. We, you know, there aren't any real true objective empirical studies in those countries. Now, I've seen some, you know, some advocacy research. Um, frankly, only seven eights or seven eights of all countries, uh, you know, ban homosexuality. The ten largest countries in the world uh, are the ten largest militaries in the world ban homosexuality, which includes India and a variety of others, most of the Muslim countries. Uh, but, yeah, but it's, I, and it's Korea, a Cuba, Pakistan, Iran. Uh, this is not good company. I think but, whether you are right, uncomfortable but, with uh, homosexuality or diversity, it doesn't make you a stronger country. It's certainly uh, one thing that we found, I don't need a study to understand this, whenever an organization prizes honesty and integrity, there's always a positive impact. And I know that was true when Colonel McGinnis was serving. It's absolutely true today. I saw it face to face with my own eyes in my unit as I served for 18 months as an infantry officer. We as a defense department, and the Congress and the American people have to decide with this very delicate thing we call the military culture. Are we going to run off people and not be able to replace them? There are serious consequences for that. You mean the and Arabic linguists that you're kicking out? Those are the people well, you're talking the about, the ones that you've run out? Yeah, yeah, Dan, I understand your, your anecdote, uh, and you're one of It's not an anecdote, it's my life. Numbers. It's absolutely my you're career, right. and you're it's right because it of people is, like you that I'm being fired, and 14,000 have been fired. I can't believe that you would say yeah, that it does our country any good to kick people out Dan, of the Dan, I was a linguist, too, and I am a linguist. I understand the hard work that goes into that, mm -hmm. but we define groupings. There are 1,362 generals and flag officers, as you know, Dan, at, within the last year that sent a letter to President Obama and said, look, you know, this is, this is a readiness nightmare. Don't change the law. What do you think is going to happen? They based it upon I think readiness. they will change the law. They have a President Obama who says he wants to and a Democratic Congress. Well, they certainly are intending to do that, John. Uh, I don't know that we really understand what the consequences will be. I have to stop you there. We're out of time. Thank you, Dan Choi and Bob McGinnis, for joining us.